Hi, we're on to day four, looking at most skills, still very much the foundations. And the first thing we're going to look at in terms of primitive reflexes in detail is the spinal gallant reflex. This is your reflex that causes the spine to wriggle as the baby's coming through the birth canal. It's really, you know, that wriggly reflex and a person needs to get control of it so that if you put a person in a crawling position and you run a thumb down one side of the spine, then down the other side of the spine, there should be no reflex wriggle or dropping of one shoulder or the other shoulder. The person should be able to stay there without any movement when you are moving your thumb up and down one side of the spine. It's really important to gain control of it because it impacts on bladder control. It impacts on um, the development of the spine and particularly the muscles supporting the spine equally. So humans need to get complete control of it. So the consequence of retaining it are that the child wriggles when the child sits on a chair, it gets something pressing on the base of its spine. It, by reflex, wants to go to the toilet, so it starts wriggling. It really can't stop it, it has no idea. And so the child keeps saying they want to go to the toilet, or they keep wriggling involuntarily, and they're labelled ADHD or whatever. And there's a very high correlation between children with retained spinal gland and those diagnosed as ADHD. As I said, scoliosis is a problem when one side is sorted, but the other side's not. So you get an uneven development of the muscles on either side of the spine. Because it causes an involuntary response in the bladder, then you get bedwetting. And obviously it's a really sensible thing to do is to get everybody to the stage where they've got good bladder control. Even when I'm working with seniors or women after pregnancy, this is a very good exercise to do to bring back bladder control. Because you get this reflex that you want to go to the toilet all the time, it disrupts your concentration, makes it really difficult. The other business is you don't really have a sense of where you are in space. And one of the things that comes out of doing this exercise, you get a very much better sense of your body mapping and where your limbs are in space. So there's a lot that comes into it and those later skills impact tremendously on math skills. So to get your spinal gland integrated, you want minimal clothing, you're lying on the floor, arms and legs together, just like our hero in the first picture, and then you are going to very, very slowly take out arms and legs. Problem is that many children can't do this to begin with. And that means the parents are going to have to pattern it. They're going to have to move the arms and legs. And you might want to start with just the arms and get them going because you yourself only have two arms. You might want to practice taking out an arm and a leg and getting the child to match it by taking out their arm and leg. One of the tricks I use is I give the children weights. It doesn't matter if it's a tin of beans or anything, anything so they get greater resistance as they're going out. They can really feel that their arms and legs are going out. And it's the greater the feeling and the greater resistance, the bigger the message is going from hand and foot and leg and arm to brain. And we want those messages being very precise. And we want to make those messages happen. So you are simply going to get the child to the state where they can go all the way out. All the way to the point the legs are completely splayed and the hands are touching at the top. And note the arms and legs stay on the floor. They're not going up in space. When the arms go up in space or the child takes a shortcut and slips them back quickly, the child does not know where their limbs are in space. You want the arms and legs straight the whole time, if possible, and really, really slow and under control movement. 
It is about conscious, precise movement. It's about telling the brain where the arms and legs are. It is pretty tedious. Therefore, if you do it five or 10 repetitions every single day for at least six weeks, you're going to make progress. It takes the brain at least six weeks to get control over any muscle. So it's not going to happen quickly, but it will happen and it will happen in any individual. I don't care how disabled they are, whatever, they, every individual is able to gain control eventually of their arms and their legs. So every single child in mainstream school ought to have this movement under control. The advantage is it stops everyone complaining that children can't control their bladder. The advantage is it develops children's sense of proprioception, where their arms and legs are in space. It's a good piece of preventative health. So go away and practice it. Practice it on yourself, get a feeling for it. And any problems, send me an email. Um, these are my details and I will see you tomorrow.